What's up, everyone? We're the Microphone Joes, and as always, I'm joined by No Rev and Adamic. I'm CJC, right. and you will float with us too. <laughs> All right, that was, that was a pretty good opening. Okay, yeah, that, that was huh. pretty decent. So obviously, we're here to talk about it. We all saw it. Um, Adamic is our resident Stephen King expert, so we can get some of his ideas and thoughts. Um, and okay. I'm no just Rev afraid is, of clowns. Is terrified of clowns, but did okay. He only pissed his pants once. So it didn't smell well, too bad in there. One and a half. One and a half? Yeah. The second one was just a little dribble? Yeah, it was a little dribble that just escaped. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, I, guess, <laughs> I don't know I, guess, I respond to that. I guess I just kind of fall in the middle. It was a good movie. I was a little bit annoyed by the person in the back on the rebreather, but other than that, I had a good time. Yeah, it sounded oh. like we were in the movie theater with Darth Vader. It did a little bit, didn't it? Yeah. Well, you couldn't help that. I was more annoyed once we figured that out. I was okay with it, but I was more annoyed with that guy that kept laughing obnoxiously yeah. at everything. There's like Easter eggs sitting there on the stairwell. He's like, ha! I was like, what the fuck? Dude, it's not even funny. Why do you keep laughing like so that? Just a quick PSA for anybody listening. When you go to a movie, keep your goddamn mouth shut. And don't bring in your respirators. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't tell people they can't do right, that. Right, but even still, it's like you're going to a horror movie when you obviously have breathing problems. Isn't Leave your cell phone last? off. Keep your goddamn mouth shut. Don't play with the recliners if you have them in your theaters. Laugh yeah. appropriate. Yeah, this yeah. is two for two. I yeah. said it before. I might never go see another fucking movie in the theater God, again. There's just people that you want to get up and just punch them in the face. Or go God bless America and just start unloading your guns into yeah, they the... want it, they think that they no. they think that, that clown on screen is their worst nightmare. I am your worst goddamn nightmare, motherfuckers. That's right. Well, I interrupt my movie. popcorn too. Like, as it already already has popcorn too. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch you beat the shit out of something. This is better than the movie. All right, all right so let's get into it. Um, this is going to be full of spoilers. So if you haven't watched it yet, spoiler you've alert, warned. you've been warned. So okay, uh, who wants to start us off with some thoughts? Uh, I'll, I'll go. Um, so I like the movie. I think we all we touched base after the movie, and we all kind of agreed. I don't know where people are saying that it's such a horror movie. No. For no. me, it was more of a thriller. Because, Rev, like you said, you hate clowns. You're yeah. terrified of clowns. And you were, at the end, you're just like, eh. Because, eh. see, like, me being deathly afraid of clowns, you would think that that would give me, like, a one-up to be scared. But, really, it, meh. I definitely think there were some freaky moments. Don't get me wrong. You talked about the twitching. CJ, yeah, the, like, I how that know it was really you. scary. It was just kind of like... I don't know, I felt like I was having an epileptic attack or something whenever it happened. Like I said, there was definitely some moments that were kind of like, holy shit. Um, like the room full of me. clown dolls and I everything think the, else. Honestly, That did freak me out a little bit, the but painting it was... painting yeah. me. Yeah. Like the chick the, with okay, fucked up the, face. The, ep, the, um, the guy with... Uh, what is that disease called? Leprosy. Leprosy. That, when that guy first came out, that, that freaked me out a little bit because it was nasty. Just yeah. like his nose had fallen off and there was goop coming out. But like the other moment that I found kind of scary was kind of ruined by kind of bad CGI was the headless kid coming down the steps in the yeah. library. I felt right. like that could have been really scary, but it it looked really clunky. Didn't did you did you agree? I, it wasn't I don't think so. I think he was supposed to be kinda like Yeah, maybe you know, like Twitchy. That's that was kinda they should have called him Twitchy the clown. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I the, the for me the that library part had the most tension though. Like him going down yeah, and finding like, the eggs. Yeah, yeah there was a lot of attention there. And then that was the best moment when he turned around and it was the clown chasing him because it was like, holy shit, didn't see that coming. Right. But other than that, I didn't find a lot of it scary. Yeah, they, yeah. they tried for a lot of jump scares. Yeah. What they tried for. Well, yeah. It was more of a thriller. Yeah. It did leave you, there was moments where you were on edge, but not like ready to be scared, just what's going to happen, you know? All right. Well, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Um, because they, I was happy with some of the things that they updated and I was disappointed with some of the others. Um, one of the things that I noticed, I don't know if you guys picked up on it, they didn't know what to do with Mike Hanlon, the young black kid. Yeah. Like, yeah. he had, like, no fucking lines. He got shoot in there. Like, there was very little development on him. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, he had a, a bigger part to play in the book, in, in the original TV series, um, because he is the glue that brings them all back to Derry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it seems like, yeah, he only had a handful of speaking parts at best. Yeah. That which I felt was kinda of disappointing. It seemed like, yeah, if the movie didn't have him, you wouldn't even have noticed, no. quite frankly. No. Um but they, they updated his origin story quite a bit. Um I mean they, they updated everybody's but what they were afraid of 
has changed quite a bit. In the time period, clearly. Um, yeah, because the orig- the book was set in the the kids were set in the fifties. Yeah, um, and this one set in, in the nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, and then yeah. when they were adults, I believe it was the eighties. They did that because there's going to be a sequel. Obviously, they want to put the adults in today's time. Yeah, in present day. Yeah, right. But um, and it, it reflects, like I said, what they're afraid of. Um, because back in in the nineteen fifty seven original version. Like, the one kid was, like, afraid of werewolves. Yeah. And things like that. And it was more just, like, a hairy dude. It was, like, that <laughs> shitty TV werewolf. That is just like, it's basically just a well, guy yeah. with, like, long hair on his face. So I have a vague understanding of the book. Didn't, like, the monster from the lagoon show up at some point, too, in the book? One of them was scared of that. The mummy. The mummy, okay. Yeah. It was, like, classic monster movies that they were... Monsters they were afraid of. Yeah, because they touched on it a little bit. They were, like, seeing movies... In the yeah. theater, in the original book, and and one of the kids was directly afraid of that fucking wolf. I kind of thought movie. Freddy Krueger might show up because they like three or four times the movie theater, you, the, the theater showed up a bunch in that. Did you notice that yeah. when it was playing? Mm. It was a bunch of times they were right Nightmare in the theater. And Elm yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street kept showing up. And I'm thinking, okay, mm. maybe one of them is afraid of Freddy Krueger, and he's that would have been a cool little homage. yeah, but yeah. it never happened. I don't know what they were trying to get at there because it did. I, I think four or five times they showed up. The theater was either right in the foreground or right in the background, but you could easily nice. read what movies were playing. It's not like a huge part of the books, but yeah, it's referenced a few times in the book. They go to the theater, um, and I think. Mike Hanlon saves the, the Palace Theater, I think is what it's called. Mike mm. Hanlon, as an adult, saves the theater from being bulldozed, like mm. preserves it a historical monument or some shit. Mm. But yeah, so that that was interesting um, that they updated their fears, uh, and then clearly there was things that weren't in the book or the original TV show that they brought in. I so I guess one of my biggest complaints, and people will probably disagree a little bit, is I think they fucking nailed the look of Pennywise. Like, the way that he looked as, like, a, a terrifying clown. But I don't know about the actor so much. I feel like when he actually had lines to deliver, like, I think his pacing was just off. Ben like, yeah, yeah, like, when he was talking to Georgie in the theater, I just, it, like, he didn't seem menacing. He just sounded like he had a lisp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I did notice I want to bring up, too, is um, the one thing I do remember, obviously, besides the clown from the um, the ri- or the original movie... Was he turned into like a spider monster kind of thing? At the end of the first movie? Well, they yeah. fight him as adults, so I mean, that still could happen. Well, yeah, yeah. but they didn't even, like, the only thing well, they he did, did on he that did was the was tentacle, trying, like, yeah. the, the talons or whatever. Like, that was kind of lame. Yeah, it's. But Pennywise doesn't really have. Pennywise is the physical manifestation, but it doesn't really have a physical form, right? It's more of an no, astro. No, and even thing. in the books, um,. I think the original TV series did its best at trying to fill in the blanks, but Stephen King pretty much described it as, like, indescribable pretty <laughs> much when he introduced the original monster, like, its true form. Yeah. Um, because in the books, it's a being from another world, and I had filled you guys in on it um, that in the books as well. They have, like, a, a clubhouse down in the Barrens. They don't really visit the Barrens much. In this movie, I'll they circle back to that. Right in the beginning, didn't they? Yeah, but they don't hang out in the Barrens like yeah. they did in the books because in the books they were there pretty much all summer. They kept going back and like hanging out down there. But um, they build a clubhouse that Ben teaches them how to build, and then they light a fire in there and get high off of wood smoke, <laughs> pretty much. And they slowly start to pull themselves out. But um, I think it's fucking Richie and Mike that are left in the clubhouse and they have a vision of it actually crashing down where the oh. area is built up when, at like hundreds of years ago before people inhabited the area <laughs> and then the town was built over top of him. So in the movie they explain that when the charter was signed all 92 of the original members disappeared. That didn't happen in That the didn't books. happen in the books. I thought that was kind of a neat creepy element to it like they just vanished in a trail of blood to the well house. That, yeah, yeah that would be of... kind of cool but I feel like nobody would build a fucking town there then. Probably not but I mean we are talking about like 17th century yeah, people don't really give a shit. About so what did he feed on? It was probably <laughs> just a wolf. Blood. Oh, 17th century, let's go, guys. <laughs> it, was pro- it was probably just a pack of wolves. What did no he feed deal. on before the town was there? It never says. I feel, I feel like it's just kind of left to your imagination. And it might be... I mean, that's that I feel like is kind of a, a bit of a plot hole. Because, like I said, if you... Like, 97 people just suddenly go missing. You know what I mean? Like... Somebody's going to catch on at all these abandoned buildings or well, whatever. Well, so that was the thing, there. and I felt like they should have touched on it a little more. I feel like the adults might know what's going on because they basically... So, 
they kind of ignore everything about the kids. Like, the adults are very, very not present. Like, fuck, Ben's the fat kid, right? Yeah. When he gets cut up, why don't they take him to an adult to get fixed? So that's something they address in the books is it almost has, like, a presence in the town and gets adults to kind of, like, turn away. When oh. shit like that is happening, he kind of basically he like infected the town itself. Was that why when that car drove by, when Ben was being cut up and the adults ignored him, the balloon shows up in the back seat? Is that kind of a yeah? I think it was it? a not subtle kind of nod to it, but in the in the books, it's not that direct. Basically, there's a couple of instances where adults could have intervened and they just kind of find an excuse to be somewhere else and hmm. shuffle away. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the movie. I felt like at times, though, motivations or characters weren't developed really well, like the bully. Um, God, I wanted just, to punch that kid right in the mouth. He was just a psycho, and they I, they tried to show it off that he, his dad was abusive, but it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. So yeah. late in the movie, you know, it seemed Left like field. there should have been a little more... A little more development there or to show up. why he was, a psych, uh, he was so psycho. And they don't flush it out too much in the books either it is yeah his dad's abusive and it just kind of fucked with him but they don't sit there and go into particular instances i'm not sure if his dad was a cop in the books either i'd, I'd have to go back and look but he does end up killing his dad in the books and that's what they and they they pin the uh, disappearance of his other two other three cronies um on him yeah because the two that didn't go that are still alive that nothing happened to them they die in the sewers because they they like chase the losers into I love calling them <laughs> but, uh, they chase the losers <laughs> into like the, the sewer. one friend did in the movie where he or yeah he, he, into the he sewer. was a lot more fucked up in the books um and he had a little bit bigger part to play like in the books um Beverly accidentally runs across the four of them lighting their farts on fire <laughs> in the dump and like because she is like oh shit if they catch me they're gonna fucking kill me you know what I mean so she hides in this car. And the two friends go away, and it's just Henry Bowers and it's Patrick, and I forget his last name. But um, and Patrick is like fucked up in the head. He like kills his little brother when he was younger, when his little brother was a baby or something, like suffocates him. And um, he has a refrigerator full of dead animals that oh. he like puts in there and makes them like starve to death, and like comes and checks on them oh. in the dump. Yeah, and he offers to suck Henry Bowers' dick at some point, and Henry's like "fuck you" and like pushes him away or whatever. But shortly thereafter, that. Patrick goes to his fridge and Bev like sees him opening his fridge and it's full of like flying leeches that like start fucking attaching to him and shit and, and kill him. It's it. But like it, that like start attaching to him. He's like trying to rip him off and, and fucking kill him. Huh. Yeah. So that's what actually happens to him in the books. God, yeah. I would have loved to see that. Yeah, that that was one of my disappointments. I was like, man, that would have been a fucking hell of a scene. Yeah. But, oh well. Yeah. Huh. Um, so I had one big question coming out of it. Not to jump too far ahead, but... The kids are floating at the end, literally. Okay. Are they dead? It doesn't say. That was another thing. Is like it cuts from them. Like the kids are coming down. And yeah, all of a sudden they're, they're, outside. Just like, they're on their own though. And they, <laughs> <laughs> they get the fuck out. Of well, there. you're welcome for saving you, but fuck you. Figure out how to get out of here. Yeah, yeah I, I'm gonna assume they're dead, and we'll just have to. So they in. stood there while all these corpses just floated down around them. <laughs> I guess that's not in the books. Like, so it's. It surprises me because in some things where they had to kind of fill in the blanks or update them, they did so well. Like I said, with like what the kids are afraid of and, and bringing things into the new age. And then some things they dropped the ball like that. Like that's all original writing. Just like the kids floating. I thought It's Lair was fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. That's it was way cool. better yeah. than the, was the really first cool. movie. Um, yeah, wasn't it just like kind of a cave? <laughs> yeah, it was basically just like a cave with bones everywhere. But yeah, yeah. this one was a lot fucking cooler yeah. than I thought. But yeah, they... You know, the kids are floating down, and then they just forgot there's a bunch of kids in there. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, I yeah. thought the final scene was fucking awesome, where they beat the shit out of it. Yeah, oh, yeah. it was really That good. was fucking sweet. And that one kid um, from Stranger Things that plays Richie. little speech oh, yeah. that he did. Yeah, he's just like, you dragged me down here, and now I've got to beat the shit out of this clown. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty badass, yes. I did, kind of, I did kind of like that character in total. Just the amount of shit talking and everything yeah. else. Yeah, like, uh, Richie was like the sarcastic one um, in the books. He would try unsuccessfully to do like different characters' voices. So, jumping ahead of myself, I guess, a little bit. Um, when they're adults, they all become successful to some degree because of the shit that happened with it. Somehow it like made an impact on well, their life. Well, doesn't Bill become like a horror author? He's, yep. basically, he's basically Stephen King. 
Yeah, he he becomes a horror novelist. Um, Richie <laughs> goes on to be like a disc jockey, but he gets yeah. really good at his voices, oh. like to the point where he can just like switch characters. <laughs> um, Bev goes on to be a fashion designer. Mike Hanlon stays in town. He's like runs a library. He runs a library. Yep, he ends up running the Dairy Public Library. Um, what the hell was his name? Steve? No, not Steve. Stanley um, kills himself. He's the one that kills. himself. He kills himself when they when it comes back. Yes. Right? Is Stanley the one with asthma, or is he? The, no, he no, was he Jewish. was the one. He was the Jewish boy. He was the Jew. Oh, okay, yep. okay. I, yeah, thought, he, he, he I really, thought he was a little. He didn't have a big role to play in. No, the that's movie Mike Hanley. Oh. Yeah, he's Mike, but he didn't have a huge role to play either. The little Jewish boy. He, I felt like in the beginning, but as it went on, he kind of got pulled out. He didn't have much to do in the books either, only because he like killed himself. That's the beginning of the it book. Well, the the Georgie scene's the beginning, and then it flashes to when they're adults, and that's it's him killing himself in the bathtub. He slits his own wrist. Yeah, and um, it's there's a little bit of for it's not foreshadowing because it already happened, but later on in the books when they all cut their hands and they make the blood oath, Stan like mocked cutting his wrist. Hmm. So it was basically like if you go chronologically, it was foreshadowing him doing that. But it's mentioned later because in the books. book it jumps around, right? It's yep. not yeah, yeah. It's much later in the books, and as adults, they lose all of their memories. Of what's going on. I mean, you hear him talking about it at the end of it, how the, like things are starting to fuzzy. They're, yeah, yeah, they're starting to get fuzzy. Hmm. Um, they probably forget. They probably looked up and forgot all those kids were there and then walked That could be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Yeah. It could be, yeah. That... But, um, yeah, so they slowly start to get their memories back over the book. And I think the director had actually said that they're going to jump between time periods again. Like, they're going to, in the second movie, it's going to be about when they're adults, but they're going to harken back to 1989 hmm. a lot. Do you think no. they'll kill off Stanley in the, in the new movie, or do you think they'll keep him alive? I think they'll kill him. It's it's, it's too canon, you know. And they okay. they jump around some things, but I think as an adult, yeah, it'll probably start with him killing. Well, himself. I mean, they did change the canon. Beverly didn't fuck all the kids at the end. <laughs> That's, so. true. <laughs> That's true. That's um, true. Yeah, they made it a little bit different. They 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 tweaked Ben's character too because Ben was at a young age, almost like a, a architect prodigy, like because he because yeah, he's the one that helped them build the treehouse. You said. The, it was not a treehouse. It or was the like clubhouse. Yeah, they like they dug a hole in the ground, and he like reinforced it so it wouldn't cave in on itself. And the, the they actually um, tweaked his entrance too because when he he gets cut by Henry Bowers, and he like starts to carve that H in his chest, and he kicks Henry Bowers in the nuts like he does, and then he spins backward like into the Barrens, and he runs across um, Bill and Eddie down there, and they're trying to build a dam for that great water and like he hides in the bushes or whatever and Henry encounters Billy and Eddie and they leave him alone and get the fuck out of there and then Henry like teaches them how to build the dam and they flood the barrens accidentally and this <laughs> Irish cop comes down and, <laughs> and like gives them shit about it just like hey holy fucking shit I can't believe you did that and then he's the one that told them it was great water that they're basically standing and pissing shit <laughs> and so they, they <laughs> take the dam down but um the Irish cop is one of the voices that Richie does but uh, in the in the books, they don't ever like actually attack it. They do a little bit. They make silver bullets because uh, it was a werewolf. Silver thought. like balls because they have a slingshot. Yeah, but um, that, that was in the, the, that was in the original. That. that was in the original movie. Yeah, um, and it's it's more like their power of belief that hurts it because like at one point, uh, it when Stanley first encounters it, he is uh, he's a bird watcher. And, like, he goes into the sewer or something like that. I forget why. Something lures him in. He thinks he hears somebody talking or some shit. But um, it is, like, about to corner him and kill him. And he holds up, like, his book of birds and, like, starts reciting bird names. And for whatever reason, like, the belief, like, pushes it away and he can escape. Yeah, well, they kind of touched on that huh. at the end of the movie. When they weren't afraid of him anymore, he lost his power over them. That's why they were able right. to beat him because they weren't afraid. Like, he couldn't eat Beverly because she wasn't afraid. Right. Exactly. So he put her in that weird trance. Yeah, because she looked into the deadlights. Yeah, and then Ben kissed her, which was very cringeworthy. <laughs> a true <laughs> I think kiss. That's the kids <laughs> yeah. Yeah. did what they could. Well, you know what okay. I mean? So you know what? I'll say this. For being all of them very young actors, they all did a really good job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought Especially so um, the girl who played Beverly. I thought she was really good. Yeah. Um, the boy that played Ben, or not Ben, um, the stutterer. Bill. Bill. Did a good job with the stuttering. It didn't sound super fake. It sounded like somebody that had a stutter. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, I mean, they all... I didn't think any of them were terrible. No, I, I don't, I don't think so either. I think and a lot of times when you have movies with a lot of children actors, you end up getting a lot of cringeworthy shit out of it. Yeah. So, they did a good job. I thought they were all pretty good. Okay. Um, 
I'd like to bring this up, one of these scenes. Um, the bathroom blood scene. What about it? How, why did the dad not see all of the blood everywhere, but so the that's, kids could? That's like its influence on the town. Um, it was different in the books. Like, the blood happens, but that hair doesn't come out and grab her or anything like that. And it's not nearly as bloody. Basically, like, yeah, in, the, in the books, like, it just, like, overflows out of the sink. Yeah. Right, but then how, she could see it and all the kids could see it, but how come the adults couldn't see it? And like I said, it's just, it's influence. It like, kinda... at the end, when the dad attacks her, like, it's it's it basically driving them to their worst self. Like, he, like, puts a, basically, like, puts a hand on their emotions and, like, drives them to their absolute fucking worst. And when he is, he infects people that are, like, emotionally weak and things like that are people that are kind of naturally malevolent. Mm-hmm. And so he can influence them more. So that's, like, when the people notice that Ben is getting cut up and they just drive away. He just has a way of, like, diverting attention, kind of. Mm-hmm. That's, you have kind of have to, I mean, it's a killer clown that lives in the sewer. Yeah. You, have, you have to suspend your telepathic field, field. I mean, but if it was me and the dad is like, what blood? I would have just fucking left it. He's, <laughs> screw it I'm not cleaning up all that it's not my blood how did they clean that up yeah it was like, it was spotless cow. that that shit was spotless there was in, nothing in the books they wait for her dad to go away her mom lives with them too in the books too but she kind of like turns a blind eye to her dad being a fucking weirdo but um <sighs> weirdo it's an understatement it's it's simultaneously better and worse in the books because like in the books he's physically abusive like he punches her in the stomach and shit sometimes oh. hmm. yeah he's kind of fucked up but it's not like as rapey as yeah I got it was a really rapey <laughs> yeah. until, him. Yeah. until like the very end when he, when he starts to like actually attack her that does happen in the books but it's not he doesn't like blatantly sexually assault her like in the books he wants to check and see if she's still a virgin basically and like chases her out of the house and down the fucking streets, but it's implied that yeah, he had a strange sexual attraction to his own daughter. Ugh, yeah, that's Stephen King, man. That's Stephen King. What, what was he doing? What drugs was he doing this time? Yeah, that's a good question. Agreed. Yeah, but um, had and also or while he's chasing his daughter like through town, people are like seeing it and looking away. It's it, yeah. Well, not like it's not like a procession. Of, she doesn't like march down Main Street through a parade or anything, yeah, yeah. But like the handful of people she comes across, like basically, eh, not my business, and take off. Hmm. No. Yeah, the parents were all really in their own ways fucked up. Especially, uh, which one was a little hypochondriac there? What's his name? Eddie. His mom. Holy crap, she was disgusting personality wise and to look at. Yeah, yeah, oh. she's like she, that was actually pretty spot on. She's like that in the books too. She's like the kind of smother, but in the in the books it's a little bit different. Like smother from emotions or smother from just the fat that absorbs everything they're both i guess but i thought uh, she was gonna pop at one point like when she was sitting in her chair her, she, yeah she yeah. looked like the stay puff marshmallow man Kinda, yeah. i think that was a suit i don't think that the actress was actually i, I hope not because that's really unhealthy like repulsive <laughs> yeah no i she seemed a little disproportioned yeah like, like i said i think it was a suit like but, she had um, a beach ball shoved into her stomach yeah <laughs> but uh that. in the books well, yeah, all of his shit is psychosomatic because his mother is so overbearing. But um, it's not the girl that tells him that it's a placebo that he's getting, like asthma medicine or whatever. It's uh, the pharmacist at one point. The, the creepy ph- pharmacist? The creepy pharmacist. <laughs> yeah, at one point, he like takes him around back and just just kind of be like fucked up. is like, you know, all of your medicine is psychosomatic, right? And it's a placebo. And basically... I, he seems he in his own mind he's doing it for good, but at some point the guy's like, "Why?" Would, Eddie's like, "Why would he even tell me that?" You know, just to, it's to a torture him. Yeah, 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 I did. It's that a was gazebo. I did like that joke. <laughs> so, like, hey, what's it? Or what? These are all gazebos. <laughs> no, but, what? Um, he does have a confrontation with his mother in the books. When his arm breaks, he goes to the hospital because he starts to have an asthma attack, even though it's not actually an asthma attack. And his mother meets him in there, and he tells her that he knows that it's a placebo. And she's kind of, like, freaking out, like, you know, I'm going to lose control of this kid. And then he's like, well, I'll keep taking my medicine, but I get to hang out with my friends. And that's kind of his trade-off. But later in life, he is still on medicine and shit, because they forget all about the events of it. (laughs) So he, like, basically goes back to... Being. being under his thumb. And then he marries somebody that's basically his fucking mother. That yeah, is overbearing yeah. like that. I, I, I knew that. Because that's creepy. He has a driving limo. 
He's a limo driver. Yeah, but he's like a really successful one. In the books, um, is there he drives for Al Pacino as... or something oh. like that. He oh, drives like okay. huge celebrities. Okay. He drives I was around, about to so. say, how successful is a successful limo driver exactly? I feel like if you get big name clients like that, you probably well, yeah. roll in it, man. Yeah, they, that's different. Well, but... they'll probably like you form it... almost like a friendship. They probably request you specifically, depending on the celebrity. But right, yeah. but I was thinking in terms of well, he's in the town of Derry. How many rich and famous? Well, he must not be in the no, town of Derry. Everybody anymore. moves except, except for Mike. Mike. Oh, yeah, okay. Mike is the only one that stays as the head librarian there. Yeah. But yeah. What else you got? Uh, I don't know. You got any more thoughts? No rev. I do not fucking like clowns, man. <laughs> I'm so yeah, mad that you guys dragged me to this, but <laughs> I mean, it, it, honestly, it was not nearly as bad as I was anticipating. But I thought the room of clowns was gonna get you. It got me a little bit. It got me a, a tiny little bit. But I mean, you know, I kind of bombarded myself with the thought. Okay, there's gonna be clowns in it. I think most of the horror parts for me because that not. I've, Literally, at no point was I actually afraid. It was more like some things were kind of chilling. Yeah, it was more like, like, wow, that's fucking weird. It was more like disturbing rather than scary. Yeah, like the opening, like we were saying off off mic, um, I didn't expect them to just bite that kid's arm off. Like, you don't see a lot of violence towards children in movies. It's kind of one of those taboo things. And I was genuinely shocked the kid is lying in the street with his arm ripped off, bleeding out. Like, yeah. I'd, I'll give him credit for that. I was not expecting... I thought he'd just reach up and pull him in and that was going to be the scene. No, that's what he does in the original TV series. And it's... The, the book is... Yeah, so Pennywise basically, like, lures him to grab the boat and he right. does bite his arm off, but that's it. He bleeds to death <laughs> right there in the sewer grate. He doesn't actually pull him into the sewer. So they find his body because he's just laying in the street. And they bury him. So yeah, that, uh, that would take a huge plot point out of the movie where they, where he, the brother keeps saying he's missing. Yeah, that that too. Okay, that scene was very creepy in the basement. The, uh, you'll float oh, too. Yeah. Scene. Oh like yeah. Like when and then it was revealed he's basically a puppet that Pennywise is controlling. Like that. That was creepy. I'll give it that. That was very. Creepy. Oh yeah. Like and, I said, they did some good shit. But. Yeah. Another scene too that I kind of found a little bit messed up too was the, um right before the final confrontation with it where he's pretending to be his little brother. And he takes the um, the bolt gun there and actually like puts the bolt in his brother's head. Yeah, the air gun. It's like it's not yeah. my brother. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was all he didn't really scream too. like that. But. Well, no, but <laughs> I mean that's got to be pretty. That's got to get you know mess you up in the head somehow. That's oh, why they all forget. Forget all about it. Yeah, PTSD, yeah. yeah. man. Yeah, block it. All I out. would do everything I fucking could to forget that if that shit happened to me. Are you kidding uh, me? Yeah, yeah. They put me right in the cycle or shit. But, um, yeah, that's all original content, too. Like I said, they did really well in some parts. And then some parts, you know, it's... Maybe you should watch the movie before you actually put it in theaters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, how did this one compare to the last Stephen King adaptation, The Dark Tower? We know you were a little disappointed in that one. I liked it quite a bit better. Yeah. I, You know, that's... So, the Dark Tower movie, I feel like they improvised too much. Because mm-hmm. all, all pretty much... All of it was original. I can't actually think of any scene within the fucking Dark Tower movie that actually happened in the book, or any of the books, um, except for him meeting Jake Chambers, and even that's different. So this one, they it's more like they wrote and expanded on the source material than it is like, we're going to do an all-original story. And that, I think, is what saved them. Because, you know, weirdness, creepiness, strangeness aside, Stephen King can fucking write. Mm-hmm. I mean, that guy's worth half a billion dollars you don't get there unless you know what the fuck you're doing so uh, yeah i would have done what they did with the dark tower is taken what he had written and made it better and just you know let's bring it into the new age there's some things that clearly aren't going to work like you had mentioned like the the turtle thing and the other universe and the deadlights and whatnot they're going to touch it on in a second movie a little bit but i don't think they're going to get as weird as it was in the books yeah because you gotta you gotta uh pander a little bit to an audience that doesn't read these books well exactly like in the um in the book, uh, Bill, fit, they have the thing called the Ritual of T- Chud, and it's supposed to, it's how you dealt with, like, a shape-shifting demon. Hmm. Some Native Americans had come up with a concept or something like that, but um, you were supposed to bite down on the tongue of the monster, and basically whoever flinches first or whatever loses the Ritual of Chud, and that's how you win the battle. And it's different in the book, because they don't actually do that, but he looks into the deadlights, is what they call them. That mm-hmm. little thing that, like, in its mouth that Beverly looked into and went to the hypnotic trance. Yeah. And, um, it, like, it almost transports him out into space. It's like a, another dimension. Like, Bill starts 
it's, it's basically implied like he's spiraling towards space, towards like this barrier. And if he goes past the barrier, it has got him. And the only way that he can win is to basically like get a, a hold of himself mentally and start like trying to fight back. And he flies past the turtle as an adult. And like, because it keeps telling him that the turtle is dead. And that it is like, or the turtle is like the counterpoint of it. It's supposed to be like this great good. And it's implied that that's kind of what brought the kids together to fight it, etc. cetera. Hmm. And as adults, it keeps saying that the turtle's dead. They made a couple references to the turtle. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um, Georgie had a t- Lego turtle in his bedroom. Yep. They said they found a turtle in the, that was weird. They were in the water and it was like, Oh, I think I feel a turtle in the, camera panned into the water and then it just cut it was a very strange it scene turd. it was a turd <laughs> it was a turd oh well the turtle had poking out me yeah. <laughs> but yeah i yeah i think those were kind of subtle nods but anyways um so in the novel as an adult because they have less mental elasticity when they're older too i mean you know how you like you lose some of the childhood innocence or whatever you get kind of set in your ways so they're less capable of fighting it um so Bill is kind of like reeling when he gets into the deadlights and Richie like grabs a hold of him and faces off with it as well and he starts doing the Irish cop voice huh. and he's like let him go boyo and starts like <laughs> fucking pulling him back and that's what allows Bill to like come back from the brink because he's just about to go out and be in its control so hmm. yeah so yeah. you weren't really crazy about Ben Skarsgård as the clown no so like I said I like I said I thought they nailed the the, the look. look but it was just the the voice it just it was off I just when he had a lot of dialogue I felt like it was off it was because in the beginning I can kind of get it when he's trying to pan to Georgie basically like you know come on come on come on on here but like even when he was trying to be malevolent I think he just he didn't have that like malevolent deep voice that Tim Curry had when he was it when he started like going almost Batman style just like I'm gonna fucking get you guys you know like that should have been it because it's it is a little crazy yeah. You know, it's it's this all-powerful being that essentially has lived by itself for thousands of years and killed people. Yeah. So. I, if I may, I have an idea for who could have been cast that would have been better in the role. Huh. If anybody else has any ideas they want to throw out there, uh, I'll start Jeff Bridges. Oh, you want to, <laughs> you want to borrow into that? <laughs> no, so last week we said that we were going to do, uh, it was actually two weeks ago, we said we were going to do a hate episode and then... It, it fell through, but I wrote a bunch of Jeff Bridges and Jesse Eisenberg jokes. This man hates Jeff Bridges. I do. It's I true. can't really fathom the hatred that he has for Jeff Bridges. You want me to go through the jokes? I, At least a few. You, do as you will. Okay, well, we got like 13 minutes to kill. Unless you guys want to touch on anything from it. Is there any last? I, I don't have anything. No, I don't I know if you I'm do. Good. I think that's okay. it. Okay, that's it for me. <laughs> so, okay. Hit me. Jeff Bridges. Um... Jeff Bridges looks like a caveman that was sent forward in time to wander out of the jungle and stumble from shitty movie to shitty movie. <laughs> I watched part of Rest in Peace Department, which is basically a half-thought-out ripoff of Men in Black with ghosts, and I thought to myself, the only thing that could make this worse is if Jeff Bridges showed up. Wait, no, there he is. Well, that explains why everyone is dead. It's funny that Ryan Reynolds starred in that as well, because Jeff Bridges is what Van Wilder would have turned into if he refused to grow up and stayed in college for about 20 more years. I'm pretty sure when he was cast in The Big Lebowski, the director asked his intern to just find me the first homeless person you see that has nothing better to do. (laughs) Jeff Bridges is the answer to every crossword puzzle where the hint is overrated piece of shit. (laughs) He has the unique kind of face that if you saw it on the side of a milk carton, you would think to yourself, man, I really hope I don't accidentally fucking find this guy. (laughs) I assume Bridges wasn't always his last name. People have just burnt so many behind them while running away that it's become a warning. (laughs) I would rather a procession of ants marched up my asshole and out my mouth of my pancreas than have to watch another fucking Jeff Bridges movie. (laughs) Wow. Holy shit. Forgot about that. Before before Jeff Bridges was born, there were no negative numbers. Mathematicians had to come up with the concept of something being less than zero to truly score how bad his acting is. (laughs) So... Why do you hate Jeff Bridges so much? I just think he's a bad actor. Everything that I've ever seen... Oh, fuck you for ruining The Giver, by the way. But (laughs) everything that I have ever seen him in, he's just been terrible. (laughs) It's like... I I don't... The Big Lebowski was not his first movie. I actually looked... That was the worst part about doing this. I had to do research on Jeff Bridges. (laughs) But 
it was not his first movie, but I feel like it was his first breakout movie, and he just never left that character behind. He's just like a dumb, bearded piece of shit in every movie that he fucking plays. In The Giver, <laughs> I fucking love that book, by the way. In The Giver, all you had to do was be like old, have a beard, and be wise, and he fucking ruined it somehow. <laughs> Those were three things, dude. I d- so you didn't like Tron Legacy or anything like that? I refuse to watch Tron Legacy. I didn't even watch the first I, Tron. I, don't, I, I won't watch Tron either. It just seems retarded. Yeah, I'm just not a <laughs> big fan myself, but... I just don't like him in anything. Name a movie that Jeff Bridges is in that you actually liked. Um, Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah, but he died, and that was the best part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was like right at the very end. Like mostly, <coughs> thank God he didn't get much screen time. It was all about like Tony Stark. This and dude, how do you? That's what I mean. Is he's so obvious in his fucking acting because like Tony Stark has all these. Are, excuse me, Robert Downey Jr. has all of these scenes with him. And, like, it's so obvious that you're fucking evil. Just, like, you're bald, but you have a long beard. (laughs) You've worked in this company. Like, you're jealously jealously coveting all of these things and, like, being secretive and fucking malevolent in the middle middle distance. And, like, Robert Downey Jr. is written to not notice all of this. I feel like anybody with half a clue, especially Tony Stark, who's supposed to be this genius, would be like, why are you still working here? My dad died. Like, I had plenty of opportunity to get rid of you. I mean, his name is kind of Obadiah Stain. Yeah, I just... Wow, damn, dude. I don't even know not what he was called. Not subtle Marvel, not subtle. I'm just saying, the entire time that I watched that movie, because it was the first... It was what launched the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I was yeah. like, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, Iron Man, Jeff Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> just like, literally, gigantic fucking smile to frown. It was an emotional roller coaster the entire movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So you didn't like True Grit or anything like that? Either. I like True. I like True Grit. I, I did True too. Grit That's good. True Grit. Uh, nope. I don't like any of that shit. <laughs> I just Jeff Bridges. I I try not to see a movie. I stumbled through The Giver just because I like <laughs> the book so much, and they ruined it. Of course they did. It was just, ugh, it was awful. <laughs> um, I guess I can do the Jesse Eisenberg ones if you want. They're not as great, but they're still pretty good. Thanks. <laughs> At least I have a shared hatred of Jesse Eisenberg, so not nearly as bad as you, but he's just a douchebag. All right, um, this was actually difficult for me because I don't hate Jesse Eisenberg. He's very undescriptive. Mostly, I just feel nothing for him. Probably much like his parents. <laughs> Art. You know, I could almost forgive Hollywood for Jeff Bridges. At some point, a misguided director thought, oh, he's like a friendly hobo. They they were wrong, but at no point should have a director thought, I need an emotionless void to stammer over lines and stare blankly. Give me Jesse Eisenberg. Because that's what Michael Sarah is for. At least he had super bad. You just are super bad. He looks like a -a make-a-wish kid that somehow pulled through and then faded into mediocrity. (laughs) I, I, I... I do have one nice thing to say about him. He must have been the fucking king of hide-and-seek when he was younger. The kid searching for him always forgot that he was there at the party, and that he had been talking to him the entire time, and that he sits next to him in class, and that he had single-handedly saved that kid's entire family from a fire that one time. (laughs) In a Facebook movie? Fucking seriously? Let's make a movie that doesn't need to exist, starring an actor that doesn't need to be there. (laughs) This is coming out of left field a little, but I feel like Jesse Eisenberg probably smells like mothballs and constipation medicine. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I just I just feel that. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> when he dies, I hope he comes back to haunt some random nobody, so that when his friends come over, they can say, Hey, is that Jesse Eisenberg? Yeah. He just kind of fucking sits there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like God gave up halfway through creating him and just called it quits. Yeah, that was a bad idea. Just slap some pubes on his head and we'll call him Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> and Jesse Eisenberg is the result of generations of inbreeding by Jewish people that work at the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, uh, wow. All right. Uh, I think we're just going to have to call it a short episode unless you guys... I mean, we're at 38 minutes right now. Um, So next week, we are going to talk about Destiny 2. Yes! Um, we're all gonna For get... the puppies! For the puppies. <laughs> well, no, for us, it's for tits, for tits and, and wine. wine. Yeah. So, if you are playing Destiny 2 on a PS4 and you start getting your ass whooped by three dashingly handsome heroes that scream for tits and wine, that's us, we are the forces of Dinklage, um, and... Our clan is open. Anybody that's halfway decent that wants to join, go ahead. Yeah, actually, we, have an ever expanding roster. Yeah, so we may allow you in in our presence. There will be tribute required, but you know, 
That's that's either for tits your, or wine. That's for that's your our benefit. Primary motivation, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either that, or you know, we might have to recite the song too. So that's yeah. true. I did write a rap. There yeah. was a rap. Yes, there it was is a rap. Glorious. It's so, mostly inside jokes, but yeah, yeah <laughs> nobody else lot. would get it. But it's hysterical. Still great to us. To us. So. With that being said, we are the Microphone Joes. Thank you for joining us this week. Uh, no Rev, Adamic, I'm CJC. Please like and subscribe on Facebook and YouTube. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can find our show on Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, Google Play, iTunes, and now iHeartRadio. Thank you, and stay average. <laughs>